Oh, hello. Welcome to Tippy Ashwood. Can't seem to find Bob around at the moment, so you'll have to put up with me. Let me introduce myself. I'm Admiral Dickie Bird. And today on Tippy Ashwood, we're going to show you some of the dirty side and the underbelly that is Tippy Ashwood and my little GN15 model railway, based on the Roland Emmett stuff from Smallbrook Studios. So let's have a look around. So here's the two foot by four foot board out of its protective cabinet with no buildings and basically the bare minimum on the board. You can see the floor for the uh, engine shed. That's an isolated section. I'll mention that later, but that's so we can charge Olive without taking the batteries out of the tender. You can see the rear rail that runs behind the platform, which is going to go under the canopy where the station buildings are. Yeah, I still haven't done any ballasting. Point rotting for the signal box and the foundation for the signal box. And the coal stays. The little holes in the middle of the water pump to go in, or water crane I should say. And bulrushes at the back. And the hole down the bottom is for the signal. Okay, let's look underneath. And another view before we turn it over from the back. So here it is, the underside of Tippy Ashwood. Yeah, it looks a bit like a spaghetti factory, I know. But it's not as complicated as it looks. And there's reasons for why all those wires are there. It's only a two foot by four foot board, as I've mentioned before. And most of the components you see here are on a trial basis while we try and work things out, including a mega point system and the dead rail system. Let me explain to you a bit more detail about that sort of thing. So we start with the simple stuff. There's a basic 12 volts that comes in. I'll show you how I power that a little later. This small container protects the servo board from mega points and the leads inside go off to the servos. I have a plug-in which gives me 110 power under the board and dims the lights in the main cabinet. Then you'll see the servos from Mega Points. I like their little wooden adaptions. They're perfect. And not to outdo any of my options, there's dropper wires for all the tracks in case I wanted to do DCC. Although I use the power in the track for the smoke generator that's in Olive. A couple of extra switches which are still experimental, which switch on a charging track in the engine shed, hopefully that's going to save me taking the battery out of Olive every time we have to charge it. Not quite figured that out yet. And to switch some of the lights on and off. So not as complicated as it first seems. And yeah, it does need a bit of tidying up. 
one of my main objectives with Tippy Ashwood and being a small micro layout is I could take it anywhere. Middle of the garden and not have to worry about the power. Which is why I chose dead rail in the first place. Although it became apparent I need lighting for the cabinet as I've mentioned. And I can just plug it into a regular wall socket if I want. But I mainly run on this. A lithium battery power pack. Gives me the 12 volts. Plenty of USBs to plug my phone in. And the 110 to run the charger for the lithium battery. And the cabinet light. It can even be solar powered. So it truly can sit in the middle of the garden. Or I can just use a regular socket and a 12 volt transformer. If I have mains at my disposal. Okay, let's put Tippy Ashwood back together. Here it is in its temporary box. This keeps the most of the dirt off and saves a bit of damage. As you can see, it just opens up and we power it up to give us a bit of light. Let's look at some of the other stuff in more detail. So let's start first with the retaining wall. Might as well be the back stuff. So it's difficult to reach. And then the rear platform. The next piece is probably going to take a little bit of a jump. This is sort of what's in process. This is going to be underneath the canopy and the station building. And those tabs slot into the back of the platform. Not easy to do with one hand, so we'll pause for a second. A little bit of movie magic. That's the station building under the canopy. You can see there's going to be a lot of bricks there. This piece fits at the end of the platform and actually is going to be the tea rooms. Again, more brickwork, more windows. A fair way to go, as you can see. The next piece is the main platform. We're still trying to get the best kept station award. But as you can see, the hanging baskets aren't up to much at the moment. But there's the Tippy Ashwood board that we're all familiar with. So once again, a bit more movie magic, but this shows you the tea room, the door off the platform, and what's going to be the station building underneath the canopy. The canopy is still a bit fiddly, so it's probably just going to appear. And as if by magic, here's the canopy. I'm going to enjoy the detailing on this, but there is all those bricks on that station building underneath. I'm not looking forward to that. As you can see, this hides the loop that goes out on the left-hand side of Tippy Ashwood, which I can't always put out. 
Let me show you underneath a little bit. You can almost see the chocolate machines and the gas lights flickering underneath that. And some way of making some columns. That's going to be fun. Onto the engine shed. The other things that cover the exits out of the board is the engine shed. These are still in separate pieces at the moment. There's still quite a lot more detailing to go in there. And a tunnel mouth, which fits between the station and the back of the shed. Just to obscure the view. Next is the front wall. It has a wire for the gas lighting, so we have to feed that in first. Let me just pull that through. And a little bit of jiggery pokery. And the engine shed sits down in its foundations. And next is the roof. You can see the two pin plug and the LEDs that run the gas lights inside and that's so that we can still do some further detailing and then of course the vent top all still a bit loosey-goosey at the moment but it allows the detailing to continue and we can do a little bit at a time So let's move on to the signal box. The signal box sits in its own little hole, which has a foundation piece in. And it's sort of a front view, which you don't often see. And the roof is still loose bit of blue tack just so I can do some more interior detailing so we'll just shove that in the little hole fit snugly in And just to keep in the roll and Emmett style, we have a tree to hold the telegraph wires. They'll connect to the engine shed. Then there's the water crane. That has a little socket on it as well. Because if you've watched the previous videos, you know the fire lights up. They all plug into some of that wiring underneath the board that I was talking about earlier. Let's see if we can get a hole here. Perfect. the coal crane that's got to be quite a lot of work filling all of up with that little bucket 
still a bit more detailing to do on that as well. And the one final thing, which some of you might have seen from my Facebook, Bob Downs, is I've been working on a signal. There's no servos underneath, but you can see the piano wire coming down for that. And that fits in the back hole. A couple of LEDs to run the lights on that. And hopefully with the mega point system, we'll get a nice little bit of signal bounce. But plenty to do on that as well at the moment. So except for a few small details, that's TP Ashwood. Let's put some of the little finer stuff in. So that's how TP Ashwood comes together. coal crane and a water crane the signal which is in progress the flowers which are going to help us be station of the year and a bit of luggage the signal box still got a lamp to do Looking forward to the detailing underneath the platform and the canopy and the tea room. And the engine shed. It's probably time to fire Olive up and give her a little run. Oh, here's Bernie and Olive. Looks like we're going on to the coal stand. Maybe a little bit of water. And he's probably ready to go and get the first passenger of the day. What's that burning? Oh, you need me to go and get the token from the signal box. Oh, hang on a second then. I think I can hear Olive and Bernie coming back right now, actually. Oh yeah, that's definitely them. Oh, 
and they've got Bob with them. One last job before we wrap it up for the night. Burning an olive, bringing some coal in. <clears throat> More running next time in the next video. Good night. <laughs>